One of the areas Google's vision for Android could really be improved is theming. If you have a Google Pixel 3 and you're not into customizing it or theming it with third-party applications, you find your options are fairly limited. Well, that looks to be changing slightly in Android Q, and I'm hoping that these changes go through into the final release. So today, join me as we check out some awesome theming and customization options that are stock in Android Q Beta 1 for the Pixel 3. Let's get to it. All right, so here is my Google Pixel 3 running uh, Android Q Beta 1. Uh, now, my phone is not rooted or anything. This is stock the way that the beta comes. So the first modification we're going to be showing off is the easiest. So if you go ahead and you enable developer settings by clicking on the build number a multiple amount of times in About Phone, you'll go ahead and navigate to the very bottom of this particular menu. Now at the very bottom of this menu, you can actually see we have some brand new options here. We have theming, accent color, headline, which is your font, and your icon shape. Uh, so here are some pretty neat changes. Uh, now unfortunately, they're still locked to these presets and developers aren't able to tap into this right yet at this time, but you are able to check change the way that your device looks without having to install anything on your phone. So let's go ahead and show off how this works. So you have black, green, purple, and the device default. Now, if this is still enabled when um, this beta rolls out to other devices, the device default will probably be that Android teal. On the pixels, it is the Google Pixel Blue that you see in the top bar there. So I'm going to go ahead and change this over to purple as I really like the way that it looks. Uh, so you can see the way it changed the top bar here. And if we go change it to say green, See, the device will refresh, and then we've now got a green icon shape there, or a green accent color. Uh, and uh, to show you how throughout the, uh, you know, through the settings interface that this is, if we go into battery, for instance, you can see that the toggles are now green down here, and you can see that the battery icon also has that same green shade. So I'm definitely hoping that Google is going to be taking this and implementing this more throughout the system, so that way you can really get your own theming options in, you know, the maybe the dialer or the calendar or some other applications like maybe messaging, where you can bring your own theming into those applications. Uh, we're going to go ahead and adjust the font now this is actually this is really bad um, the font changes to this really horrible terrible look um, you know but we're just gonna go ahead and change it right back <laughs> again you know these are the preset ones we can't really change them from what they are here uh, so the final thing is icon shape uh, so we've got teardrop squircle and rounded rectangle so now we've changed it to the teardrop shape to make it a little bit more pronounced so you can see it and you can see the main area that it changes is up here in the notification pull down where you've got those near new teardrop shapes up there. Uh, now, if we go into uh, applications and I change my default launcher to the Google Pixel launcher, you can see that it also changes it there on the launcher in the app drawer as well. So it's pretty neat. You get that change throughout the UI. Uh, it's a pretty neat adjustment that Google made there. And I'm hoping it's definitely something that Google keeps, uh, you know, as we go further into the future with. Um, this Android Q beta because, and I hope they expand it as well because it's really neat to be able to choose what your device looks like. Uh, so next we're going to go into the next thing and you probably saw this uh, on one of my last videos and that is this lock screen clock and it also works on the always on display. And you can see it's this awesome text based clock. Uh, so we're going to show off how you can change that and some of the caveats to changing this as well. And this also does persist through a reboot and is changed really easily without having to reboot your device. Uh, so we have some articles linked over in the description and what I recommend is opening up the article so you can read the commands that Michelle has put down there for us uh, to go ahead and change the clocks but I'm gonna be showing off really rapid succession all three different clocks that are available all right so for the demonstration here I've gone ahead and changed my clock to the stock clock and we're gonna quickly go through the different options so going ahead and first putting the uh, text-based clock that I had before and uh, you can see what that looks like there and uh, then we're going to go ahead and switch this over. This is the uh, stretch analog clock. And I mean, honestly, it looks really weird, but I'm sure with the right with the right wallpapers, it can look really, really cool. And you can see how that looks on the lock screen. You've actually got that stretch all the way from top to bottom. And the time takes place up in the top left corner. It's a really neat touch. And I'm hoping Google's working on these and coming out with new ones and abilities for us to go ahead and change these as well. Uh, the next one we're going to go ahead and do here is the bubble clock, and this is the goofiest looking one. Uh, you can see it creates these two big bubbles, uh, one for the hour and then uh, the small one for the hour and the longer one for the minute. Uh, so that's pretty neat. You know, it does show up in the middle of your uh, wallpaper uh, on your lock screen. So, you know, it's really not that useful, 
but it's a pretty cool thing that Google's included in Android Q. And uh, going ahead and going back, uh, and there, we went ahead and switched it back to the stock clock. So those are some of the cool uh, clock face options that they've got in the, uh, the UI in Android Q. So the next thing we're gonna show off is a little bit more advanced than this, but is really, really cool. So let's go ahead and get this set up. All right, so here we are showing off the final modification that I've got for us today, and this is a revamped gesture navigation. Now, if you watch XDA TV quite often, you've probably seen Michelle's video while it was running on the older version of the leaked version of Android Q, uh, but this is actually running on the devices that we have presently and the build that's available present for the Google Pixel 1, 2, or 3. Uh, so in its standard form, you know, you've got your tap to go home, your swipe up to see recents, swipe left to go through recents, and then your back button and down here. Well, you can actually get rid of the back button and make that home pill do a lot of cool things. Now, again, I've got the article linked in the description, so be sure to go ahead and check it out to copy the ADB commands we're using here and also see how you can modify it to pretty much however you want it to be used. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do here is we're going to use the, uh, the standard uh, one that Michelle uses, which is basically enabling the uh, swipe to go back uh, across the bottom. You still keep your normal, you know, uh, recents menu, swipe up to go into the standard recents menu, uh, but swipe down on the pill is now going to be bringing down the notification shade. And this might really be useful for you guys using the Pixel 3 XL. So the first thing we're going to do is put in the code to go ahead and hide the back button. And you can see that disappeared right there. All right, so I went ahead and put in the code. Uh, so now you can see when I swipe left on the pill here, the pill actually moves. So it's not like we're breaking the animation. It actually built to handle this. And you can go into a setting and just swipe to go back and just swipe to go back. And swipe down pulls down your notification shade. And uh, you can swipe down once. I don't think, yeah, you can actually swipe down twice. And then you can swipe up again to go ahead and, and get rid of it all as well. Um, and then again, you still keep your ability to swipe through recents menu uh, by going ahead and swiping it. So that's a really, really cool thing that uh, Google's gone ahead and put in here. And uh, it's actually more customizable as well. You can actually enable a lot of different actions um, with whatever you choose to do. So say for instance, you wanted to be able to swipe down to switch between apps, you can actually go ahead and do so. By putting in the key command 143255 into the ADB command, you can actually make this change. So we're going to go ahead and open up settings and I'm going to go home and then go into Reddit. And you can see there that I can actually just swipe down on the pill and switch between my recent applications. So that's a really neat option. Uh, if you maybe have the Google Pixel 3 and don't want to swipe down for the notification panel, that's something that you can go ahead and do as well. Uh, but there is one thing to keep in mind with this uh, particular modification. If you are using a uh, the Nova launcher or anything other than the Google Pixel launcher, every time you reboot your device, you're going to have to do a few things. But don't mind, this is untethered, so you don't have to plug into your computer every time you reboot. What you need to do is quickly go into Settings, go into Apps and Notifications, go to Advanced, and then Default Apps, and then switch the Home app to the Pixel launcher and then quickly switch back to Nova Launcher. And that'll enable the back button to be able to be used on the gesture bar down here. I'm not sure why it doesn't work normally, but that's just something I figured out. So every time you reboot, and I've also noticed after long periods of inactivity, like a couple of hours, I think like 10 or 12 hours, I'll have to go ahead and redo that as well. It might be a security measure. So the final modification we're gonna show off to here today actually does involve you rebooting your device. So if we go into the settings menu here, you can see that we are using a light theme as well as my purple icon. So we're going to go ahead and reboot my Google Pixel. I've already put in the ADB command just a few moments ago. And once the device is booted back up, you'll actually see that the system-wide dark mode is enabled. Now, if you remember from my hands-on video with Android Q, uh, a dark mode is built into Android Q, but only while you're using the power saver mode, which kind of stinks uh, because you get decreased animations, decreased performance, so on and so forth. Uh, this actually enables us to be able to use this uh, at any point we want to. You just have to reboot between toggling it between light mode and dark mode. But it's a small price to pay if you're looking for a system-wide dark mode on stock Google Pixel. So I'm going to go ahead and swipe this up here and put in my pin code to unlock my device. And uh, once this thing's finished getting set up, I'm gonna go right into settings and you can already see it's the dark mode enabled. And when I swipe down, you see that it still has my purple uh, accent colors and you can see the notifications are black as well. Uh, so it's really, really cool to be able to enable this dark mode on the Google Pixel uh, without having to do any modifications but a simple ADB command and rebooting the device. 
So those are just a few of the awesome built-in modifications brought in Android Q that you can do right now without having to root your device. I really hope you found these tips helpful, and for a full rundown of each of these modifications, check out the links in the description. You'll also be able to find my really cool wallpaper. Uh, link will be in the description as well. I know a lot of people have asked for it. Uh, so I've got three different versions of that linked in the description. So be sure to go ahead and check that out. So that wraps up today's video. If you've enjoyed it, be sure to go ahead and leave it a like. And if you're not yet subscribed, be sure to go ahead and do so. And turn on that notification bell to get notified of every video we put out here. Until next time, for XDA TV, I'm Daniel Marchena.